it is two months and three days since you officially became the new president of Hope College. What have you learned? What have you have gotten into so far? Or is it still too early? Is it still sort of like the shakedown cruise right now? Well, I hadn't been counting the days, and you have. <laughs> but um, the days have gone quickly, and they've been very, very encouraging to me. I can tell you that in the, the time that I've been here, every expectation that I had of Hope College and of Holland, Michigan, has been exceeded. What were those expectations coming in? Could you share them? Well, one thing that I knew coming in, in fact, had heard a lot about, was the relationship between the college and the town. And it's very clear to me that uh, this is a symbiotic relationship that's appreciated by everyone involved, that this is a college that is uh, valued by the community and the community leaders. Um, at the same time, the college values the community. And I believe that the mutual support that we see between the, the college and the town is really of, of great value to both. Certainly, it's an advantage to Hope College to be in a place like in Michigan when we're recruiting students and faculty and staff to come and make this their home. What surprised you or has things surprised you? You know I don't think I've been surprised in a significant way. I was well prepared. The the uh, people who prepared us for this move did a good job in the transition period of helping us understand what to expect here but probably the greatest surprise for us has been the warmth of the welcome, the embrace that we've received since we've been here as a family, recognizing that this is a community uh, both on the college campus and off where there are people who have long-standing relationships, uh, who have been here a long time, who are often deeply embedded in, in this web of relationships that makes this a great place, and yet are very open to newcomers. Uh, and I say that not just because I'm coming in a particular role where you might expect us to be welcomed, but I've talked with all of our incoming faculty and staff who've come from other parts of the country this year, and they've all experienced the same kind of welcome from the community. In a certain extent, and maybe it's beyond what you can say, John, is the fact that because there was a lengthy transition period, uh, uh, Dr. Baltman stayed an extra year before he stepped down, that sort of got the entire campus community ready for a new man in charge, and maybe some of the resentment that could have happened didn't happen. Well, I can't speak to that. What I can say is that Dr. Boltman did a marvelous job of preparing the college for the next phase. The last decade or so, this college has built tremendous strength under Dr. Boltman's leadership. Uh, the college is well prepared to begin the next chapter. And I think that's largely because the leadership of this college has been good at putting in place the financial footing that we need to be strong uh, through 40 plus years of balanced budgets, through two successful campaigns to raise significant capital to improve and strengthen this campus and its infrastructure, uh, through ensuring that we do not have significant deferred maintenance on our facilities. Uh, we're in a position where we really are able to capitalize on that strength now as we begin to visualize the future. And I might add to that, uh, we also come at a time when Hope College is experiencing record demand for a Hope College education. Dr. John Knapp, tell us about some of the thoughts that went through your mind on commencement day. You were asked to deliver the commencement address, and I'm going to paraphrase. Basically, you were saying to the freshman, hey, I'm a freshman just like you. What feelings, what thoughts went through your mind as you delivered the address and basically starting a new challenge just as the 830 new students were starting a new challenge here? Well, you're, you're speaking of our opening convocation, yeah. okay. which is the, the first formal gathering of the academic year. All of our faculty are present in regalia. Um, all of our new freshmen are present. All their families who are in town for the orientation and, and move-in weekend are also there. And so we had a large audience, and it was an opportunity for me for the first time to stand before that new class and to look at all those fresh faces of 18-year-olds who are coming with such eager anticipation to Hope College and to address them not only as president of the college, but as someone who's also arriving here new and who really is, is learning and growing along with them in a new place. And so my message to them was that this is an opportunity that God has given you in your life, that there is a moment in time right now 
where you have an opportunity to make a new start, to, to lean into the experience of being in a new place, and to make the most of it. And so I talked with them about the importance of taking full advantage of what a college has to offer in the way of personal growth and development and enrichment and the relationships that are available here. I also talked with them about the importance of deepening their personal faith, of using their time in college as a time where they can not only engage in um, learning with their peers and, and a great social life, but also a time where they can cultivate the disciplines of prayer and meditation and solitude and the need to get away from the crowd sometimes, to be alone, to be, to be alone with God and to get in touch uh, with yourself again, which is sometimes not easy for 18 to 22 year olds to do when they're all living together in the busy life of a college. Dr. John Knapp, let me preface this next question in the sense that the overall mission of Hope College has been to um, follow through in its Christian beliefs. But in that light, how important is it to maintain the focus that perhaps to a certain extent the most earthbound function of this university is the education of the students. Sometimes administrators get caught up with the fundraising and the building and the uh, uh, research and the like. But it's really the students more than anything else, isn't it? Well, it is about the students, and it's about providing the students with the best possible experience we can. And that means a holistic experience, the best academic experience possible, the best co-curricular experiences, the opportunity to really develop into well-rounded, mature young adults, intellectually, socially, and spiritually. I think Hope College does that especially well. We have people who are dedicated to developing students in that manner in all areas of life on campus. Uh, not just our faculty, not just those who work with students, say, in the Dean of Students office, but I think also the people who work here as custodians, the people who work in dining services. This is a campus where people who have come to Hope College to make a career do so because they understand that the mission of this college is to help 18 and 19 year olds become mature 20 and 21 year olds who are ready to live good lives. Now, it might be a question early on and maybe too early on in your tenure here as president. What challenges do you see are the biggest ones that this school will be facing at least in the first year as president of this university of this college? I believe our biggest challenge is actually the opportunity that we face. We are a college that has options. Not every college in our category, liberal arts colleges, um, Christ-centered liberal arts colleges, um, have the kind of options that we have. As I said before, uh, we are a college that is ready to harness significant strength, enrollment strength, financial strength, um, strength of first-rate academic programs, and to move this college forward. And so for us, the challenge will be to decide what direction we want the college to go here in the next 10 years. Uh, we'll begin a strategic planning process this year where we begin to visualize the Hope College of the future and to think about just how do we want to marshal the resources we have to take this college to the next level. And certainly one of the things that I believe we must do during this period is begin to tell the Hope College story more effectively on the national stage. I think in many ways this is a college that has achieved much more than it's really taken credit for. And it's time to claim a reputation in the national consciousness of being a first-rate Christian liberal arts college that can, can uh, stand alongside the very best colleges of our kind. Let me use the word Christian and Christian education. What challenges do you see as we are seeing society evolve and move? And some of what may be against Christian norms have become societal norms. There are concerns from some educators that what they teach in 10, 15 years, if they don't change, will be considered hate speech and could possibly lead to unaccreditation. Is that a concern yet at Hope College? Is that something that's got to be kept in the back of the mind? We need to keep our Christian values intact, even if society says you got to change them. 
I don't know that that is an issue at Hope College. Uh, our faculty are committed to being the very best experts they can be in their fields of study, and that will be reflected in their teaching. Uh, we are not a college that is prescriptive about what's to be taught in the classroom in any way. Uh, we're actually a college that values academic freedom, that values freedom of inquiry and freedom of expression. Um, our faculty are accomplished scholars in their own fields, and so I don't think that they feel constrained by social pressures uh, to in some way conform their teaching to the expectations of society in any regard. I hope that all of our faculty recognize that they're here to provide Hope College students with the best possible education they can within the scope of expertise that they have as scholars. In your dealings with some of your colleagues, not only in the staff, but also the board and the like, there has been an increased emphasis, not only, as you mentioned, to the national stage, but also making Hope be a part of the Holland community. Uh, obviously, that's something that probably you'll want to continue and further along, because over the last, I've been here since 01, so for the last 12 years, I've seen the sort of the school and the community sort of intertwine even more, and I would assume that's going to continue on. Well, I think it's one of the best assets this college has, is being a part of a community that not only is supportive of the college, but a community that offers the kinds of assets that, that this town offers to everybody who's a part of our college. So, for example, um, we have a wonderful student center called 8th Street, and it doesn't cost us anything to provide our students with all the restaurants and shops and amenities that downtown Holland offers, and yet what a tremendous asset that is to Hope College compared to many um, private liberal arts colleges that may be located in small towns that simply don't offer these kinds of amenities. Um, the Lakeshore is not such a bad thing either, is it? One final thing, and you touched upon this. Um, this is a competitive situation. Hope College, yes, on the athletic fields, they compete with the other schools in the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association, and uh, they certainly have their rivals along those lines. But it's a competitive field in more ways than one. You're trying to compete for money, but you're also trying to compete for students. More students are coming, that's great, that's fine. But it's still a very competitive situation. Every tool you have and the toolbox has to be used, and City of Holland is one of them, I, was, I would assume. Well, I think we compete very well. In fact, uh, the last several years we've experienced record demand for a Hope College education. Uh, we had the longest wait list in our history this year with students who wanted to be admitted, and we just simply didn't have room for all of them. And so uh, we we are finding that this college does compete well, as you say, in a competitive environment and in an environment where the number of students of college going age in this region has actually been declining. Uh, Hope has continued to do very well as a magnet for the best and brightest students. So we're proud of that and we certainly give credit to the community as an important reason that students ultimately choose to study here. Uh, but also because we offer some of the best academic programs of any college um, of our kind in the country. Uh, we have programs that are second to none in many fields here, uh, which is one reason that I say that we need to continue to work on making the rest of the country aware of just how much Hope College has to offer to prospective students so that our enrollment becomes more geographically diverse over time. Um, the, uh, but you're right. Uh, it's, it's important to recognize that we do operate in a competitive environment, to realize that we compete for the best staff, for the best faculty, and for the best students every day. And so that calls us to be excellent in all things, to make sure that we offer uh, not only the best student experience, but we continue to be a great place to work, a place where people want to come and, uh, and make a career. And, and dedicate their lives to Hope College, which so many have done over the years. And so, uh, you know, we're up to the challenge. We enjoy the competition. We enjoy the competition on the athletic field and do pretty well there. Uh, it's one of the real defining characteristics of this college that in Division Three we have such competitive athletic programs that enjoy so much support, not only from our students, but even from the broader community. Uh, that's something that we really cherish here. But we also recognize that in today's environment, colleges that compete well, and I think especially 
especially private liberal arts colleges that compete well, have to be uncompromising in their pursuit of excellence. There's just not room for mediocre colleges in today's environment. We have to be good at what we do. In fact, we have to, to aspire to be excellent in everything we do. And I think that has been the standard at Hope College, and it will continue to be. One final thing, and it goes along with this, what you just said. Where do you see Hope College 10 years from now? Can you go gaze into a quote-unquote crystal ball, or is it something that can't really be done now because circumstances can change at a moment's notice? Well, I think that we're in control of our own future in the sense that we will engage in a process in the next few months of beginning strategic planning for that future. It would be presumptuous of me as a new president to begin to paint a picture of what I think the college ought to be in 10 years. I think it's more important for me to invite the community of Hope College to be a part of that conversation as we begin to discern what the possibilities are for this college, as we begin to understand what God has in store for Hope College in the future. This is a college that has has uh, always been uh, very devoted to a life of prayer and discernment and recognizing that the college was founded as a college that is intended to serve God's purposes in the world. And so we will seek those purposes through prayer and through a process of careful planning and discernment, looking at the strengths that we have. How can we leverage and build on the strengths that we have today? Um, how can we envision a college that tomorrow uh, is even stronger and even more recognized nationally for the excellent college that Hope is.